Lava Mouse became extinct during Middle Age times, probably because of the arrival of humans and the livestock, such as dogs, they brought with them. Its evolutionary relationships are unresolved due to its fairly generic morphology. Rodents on islands generally increase in size during the course of their evolution, the lava mouse was fairly small for an insular rodent. This rodent owes its name Malpisomes to the Spanish word Malpais, denoting the lava fields where its fossil remains are sometimes found in cavities. Mesopropithecus species appear to have been generally rare within their wide range. It was one of the smallest of the known extinct subfossil lemurs, but was still slightly larger than the largest living lemurs. All three species ate leaves, fruits, and seeds, but the proportions were different. Because Mesopropithecus died out relatively recently and is only known from subfossil remains, it is considered to be a modern form of Malagasy lemur. It may have been among the last subfossil lemurs to go extinct possibly surviving until 500 years ago. The arrival of humans roughly 2,000 years ago is thought to have sparked the decline of Mesopropithecus through hunting, habitat destruction, or both. The giant I.I. also lived in Madagascar, appears to have disappeared less than 1,000 years ago, is entirely unknown in life, and is only known from subfossil remains. As of its 2004 remains consisted of four incisors, a tibia, and postcranial material. Subfossils of this species have been found in the southern and southeastern portion of Madagascar, outside the range of extant I.I. Giant I.I.s are believed to be very similar morphologically to the I.I., but 2 to 2.5 times larger, based upon jaw and incisor measurements. Babakosha and all other sloth lemurs share many traits with living sloths, demonstrating convergent evolution. It lived during the Holocene epoch and is thought to have disappeared shortly after the arrival of humans to the island, possibly within the last 1,000 years. Based on its size, the morphology of its molars, and microware analysis on its teeth, was likely a folivore, while supplementing its diet with fruit and hard seeds. In all sloth lemurs, including it the permanent teeth erupted early, a trait seen in indrids that improves survivability of juveniles during the first dry season following weaning. Apiornis was a ratite, it could not fly, and its breastbone had no keel. Because Madagascar and Africa separated before the ratite lineage arose, Apiornis has been thought to have dispersed and become flightless and gigantic in situ. Endocasts of apiornithid skulls have shown that these animals had poor eyesight and large olfactory bulbs, much like living kiwis. This has been interpreted as a sign that, like them, elephant birds were nocturnal. It is widely believed that the extinction of apiornis was the result of human activity. The birds were initially widespread, occurring from the northern to the southern tip of Madagascar. One theory states that humans hunted the elephant birds to extinction in a very short time for such a large landmass. There is indeed evidence that they were killed. However, their eggs may have been the most vulnerable point in their life cycle. A recent archaeological study found fragments of eggshells among the remains of human fires, suggesting that the eggs regularly provided meals for entire families. It has also been suggested that the extinction was a secondary effect of human impact due to transfer of hyperdiseases from human commensals such as chickens and guinea fowl. Archaeolemur was a semi-terrestrial quadruped that spent much of its time on the ground, although it was also well suited to arboreal locomotion. Despite its tendency for a mostly terrestrial lifestyle, it was not as well suited for cursorial locomotion as macaques, the extant primates the genus is often compared to but it had shorter, more robust limbs, smaller digits, and a wider trunk. Its diet is thought to have encompassed a wide range of foods including seeds and savanna plants. The incisors of Archaeolemur were enlarged and adapted to remove hard shells and rinds from seeds and fruit. Its urotopic adaptation may explain why it was one of the last of the subfossil lemurs to have gone extinct. With its large size and massive jaws and teeth, 
the giant fossa was a formidable, puma-like, predator, and in addition to smaller lemurids, it may have eaten some of the big, now extinct subfossil lemurs that would have been too large for modern fossa. But there is no evidence that the two lived in the same places at the same time. Living species of comparably sized, related carnivores in other regions managed to coexist, suggesting that the same may have happened with both two species would have been able to prey on larger animals than its smaller relative could have, including the recently extinct giant lemurs. Why and when it became extinct remains unknown. However, local people on Madagascar often recognize two forms of fossa. Megalatopus was quite different from any living lemur. Its body was squat and built like that of the modern koala. Its petal morphology suggests it evolved to live in an arboreal environment. Its head was unlike that of any other primate. Most strikingly, its eyes were on the sides of its skull, instead of forward on the skull as in all other primates. Almost directly after human arrival, there was a rapid decline in the spores of Sporormiella which indicates a decrease in megafaunal biomass. Overhunting by humans was also deemed a major contributor to the extinction of giant lemurs. Malagasy dwarf hippopotamus bones have been mostly discovered in the rivers and lakes of western Madagascar, suggesting a riparian lifestyle, very similar to that of the modern hippopotamus of modern Africa. Malagasy hippos in general however were less grass specialized than the mainland African hippo. It is not known when or exactly how these hippos arrived on the island of Madagascar. As hippos are semi-aquatic, it is possible that they survived the 400 km trek across the channel, although presumably when the water was shallower and there were perhaps small islands along the way.